Last week I talked about grinding and farming, and this week I promised I would talk about gold farmers. Now, part of me doesn't even want to do this show, only because I don't want to give these people any more publicity than they really shouldn't get. So, forgive my pixelations now. Now, I also understand that I'm kind of opening up myself to a world of hurt by doing this show. Bring it. Okay, wait, before we really dive into this, there's one more thing that absolutely has to be said here. By doing this show, by talking about these themes, some stuff's gonna come up that some might consider or... That's worth it! Yeah. You know, actually, I'm gonna go out my plate carrier. I'll be right back. There's a distinct difference between farming for gold and gold farming, so let's get that out of the way right now. In any given MMO, you're going to want to buy things in world. Now, you do this through the in game currency. Now, if it's a fantasy setting, it's going to be the usual gold, silver, bronze denominations. Thing is, as you progress in the game, the items that you want, or sometimes even need, are going to cost more than the average casual gamer can get through the normal quest lines. So, you got some options. One of them is farming for gold. Now, this is a pretty simple task. You go to an area that's just under your level, so if the fights are trivial but the payoff is pretty decent, then you find an area to go along that's going to give you the maximum NPCs for the minimum effort, and you start running laps. Now, as you kill monsters, brigands, dragons, uh, whatever, they'll produce loot in something called a drop. Now, the drops consist usually of currency, but sometimes also items of varying value. I'm oversimplifying as usual, but this is the basis of MMO farming. You run laps, kill everything that moves, and you get golden items you can sell for gold. A lot of what you get is worthless trash, commonly known as the gray items. Now, you sell these for just a little bit of currency. Sometimes you get armor or weapon pieces that you can sell in a communal auction house to other players. Now, still other times, you can get raw materials like cloth, leather, and so on that you can use to make items, or you can just sell the raw materials on the auction house. Thing is that every MMO player has done this at one point or another because, well, it's just what you do in an MMO because you gotta grind in order to get the gold so that you can get the unobtainium swords so that you can progress in the game. And you just keep on thinking, this is annoying, there's gotta be an easier way. <sighs> there is. Enter the world of gold farmers, and here's where I'm going to tread very, very lightly, because most gold farming takes place in China, which is why you hear people refer to them as Chinese gold farmers, along with some other slurs I'm not going to repeat in this video. However, there's also gold farming going on in Korea, Vietnam, Japan, Australia, so it's not exclusive to just that one country. Essentially, these are people who just game for hours, they grind mobs and generate golden goods. They then sell these goods in the auction house and collect the gold. They then sell the gold to mostly American gamers for real-world currency. And I honestly don't want to get into the whole dirty, nasty details, but that's the basic idea here. Here's the main problem, however. The practice is not allowed by most MMOs. If you look in the user agreement, you'll see that all in-game goods and currency are usually the property of the game makers. Essentially, you're leasing everything from that cool mount you work so hard to get and the money you work so hard to earn. Kind of makes all that grinding you do feel kind of hollow, doesn't it? So in reality, the practice of selling gold or whatever the in-game currency is, it's not allowed. You can have your account deleted if they catch you. Not that it stops people from doing it. I don't recommend it myself, but if you just search on WoW Gold, you'll find hundreds of sites. Or just play the game and just find the spammers there. Oh yeah, they go all out, including the infamous body counts in Ogremar and Ironforge. And some people are going to say, well, why should I care? If you want to spend your real-world money on in-game currency, that doesn't affect me. You know, actually, it does. I'm not going to pretend that I know everything about supply and demand economics. Seriously, I'm using ramen as a food staple for the foreseeable future, so I'm not one to lecture on economics here. But the main problem of what they do is they cause undue inflation. Now, the reason that we don't solve our national debt by just printing more money is that to do so would devalue the worth of each individual dollar. The same thing happens in virtual worlds. I mean, there's a reason that EVE Online maintains economists on their staff. So let's say somebody dumps oh, 10,000 gold into an economy. It has a ripple effect. This sudden money drop makes people spend it on more goods. The supply of goods goes down, demand goes up, and the prices go up with it. This is basically how auction house prices get so out of control. And this isn't even to mention that one person with the right know-how can just destroy an auction house economy. Very brief example. A friend of mine was once banned off of World of Warcraft because they thought that he was a bot. His day job was working at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. He was doing things in World of Warcraft that the law would not allow him to do in the real world. And he loved it! For the two weeks that he was allowed to play World of Warcraft. 
This can work the opposite way as well. I mean, if a group decides to dump 500 stacks of cloth in the auction house and they undercut the normal players, who do you think people are going to buy from? High volume low prices or low volume high prices? Either way, it's just another reason to add to the stack of why people hate gold farmers. Well, most people. I mean, there's still enough guys out there willing to risk getting their account terminated to buy gold from these people. A legitimate question, therefore, is, well, what can we do about this? I'm so glad you asked. So, I hear you're looking for some goons bringing some illegal scratch into your world. You came to the right place. I can tell you how to fix it. It's gonna cost you. Oh, no, 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 I'll tell you for free. You just gotta make an investment in your own interests. Works a little something like this. You just need to sit someone down in the open trade chat on one of your servers and just watch for the spammers. They'll advertise themselves for you. You don't gotta do much work. Then reach out to them. Offer to buy some and spend a little bit of the dough to do it. And that's when you bring in a private dick because you guys do something called metrics. You keep track of everything that happens in your world. You can probably tell me what food gets eaten the most to what target dummy takes the most damage on any given weeknight. So I know there's a virtual paper trail of the money that goes back and forth. It's just up to you guys to sniff it out. Once you receive the in-game gold, it's just a simple matter of tracking back the money. Most of the brokers will be bank alts. Tunes made specifically to sell auction house items and hold money, but someone's got to be the sugar daddy. Or some ones. You'll find dozens of individual characters just feed goods and gold into the bank alt, and after going through all the files, it's just a matter of a few keystrokes, and the whole lot are gone. But you see, I can tell by that look in your eye, that shift in your stance, you're not going to do it. It takes a special kind of guts to ban hundreds, if not thousands, of accounts in one fell swoop. Clear the air like a bad hangover fog gets cleared with a good cup of joe. So I don't think you got the guts to do it. Which is why we take matters into our own hands. DCUO has been getting hit pretty hard lately. You know, we report the spammers, but it can take two or three days for the GMs to actually do anything, so we the players take matters into our own hands. We found that challenging them to a duel temporarily stopped them from shouting in world chat. It threw their scripts off. They adapted, unfortunately, but first declining duels, and then they just reworked the scripts so that duels didn't stop the spamming. They've also taken to hiding their tunes in hard-to-see locations. Unfortunately for them, we've got radar HUDs. I've seen it on other games as well, where people will violently attack characters they think are gold farmers, or impede them in any way possible. We do it because, honestly, we feel like the game developers can't. Or won't. Unfortunately, there's not a heck of a lot that we can do about gold farmers. Short of being borderline griefers ourselves. See, most of us put the spammers on ignore, but then they come back 24 to 48 hours later and we start this dance all over again. Yeah, it doesn't really work, but what really needs to happen are that the game studios need to make a stand. They need to actually make the risk far outweigh the reward from buying gold from these people. I'll tell you this right now, if hundreds, if not thousands of people suddenly got the axe and got banned for buying from gold farmers, then you'd see a decrease. stories in the Naked City. Most of them are people you'd never want to see naked.